We filled the water tanks and the diesel cans, bought some snacks at the Target, and we were off. With our friends Joaquin and Scott, the captain of My Way, they were heading south as well. Leaving, finally. Although we knew the two boats would be traveling at different speeds and going to different destinations, we thought it would be a good idea for morale to depart at the same time. The only traffic around the gate that day seemed to be air traffic. Without any marine traffic to dodge, our departure was as easy as pointing to our compass heading and making our way forward. So Scott, Joaquin, you guys are supposed to be back there, but I can't see you already. It's been a couple of hours and we already lost you. I hope you guys had a great sail to the bay or wherever you guys were sailing to. So We've just been traveling about six to eight knots. Steady breeze coming from the north and northwest. And uh, yeah, this is the most pleasant situation we've had on this coastline. Very nice, under sail only. Yeah, Rosa looking really good out here. She's pretty stable. She's a little bit squirrely with the waves coming up the bum, but very nice. A pleasure. A pleasure to be out again. Good to get out here and uh, and experience what our new boat has to offer. Trying to get a little bit of, uh, trying to get through the little hiccups. Like trying to put up the spinnaker pole was a little bit of, uh, we had to smooth things out, figure things out. That's the only way to learn. What's the best fish to catch ecologically, do you think? Uh, small tuna, probably, bonito. Their populations seem to hold, especially if they're caught by hand line and traditional fishing methods like used in the Maldives and some islands in the Pacific. Do you think specifically around here the bonito is good? Yeah, same. I think in the Pacific, uh, the Pacific has a healthy bonito population and it's possibly the healthiest fish you can eat because it's, uh, it's a yearly fish. So not too much radiation and mercury and lead in it like it's good to eat the fish that grow in one or two years and yeah fast big. growing yeah young fast fish. growing and nothing too, too big it's like no it's like it's like a workout <laughs> six months of this and we all put up biceps like this especially me that like it <laughs> yeah. Automatic pilot right there. Yeah, it was a little bit of a tight fit. It's getting better. I, can, I think that the noise you feel is water and air that's sipping up the gap between the plastic. We sped along at a steady pace with the seas building ever so slightly as the evening was approaching. I think these may have been humpback whales, but they popped up near the boat really quickly and were quite camera shy. We were feeling pretty relieved that the old sail that our neighbor had given us right before leaving San Francisco was holding out and showed no sign of giving up.
We both put on our harnesses and prepared for the coming three hour or so long night shifts. It had taken us about 24 hours to pass Monterey Bay, and now we were sailing past Morro Bay. Our second day on board pretty much looked like the first, but we had different visitors this time. Pacific white-sided dolphins. They never get boring, and they always make me wonder why they're there and what they're doing. This would be one of many visits by these dolphins. We followed them merrily into the Channel Islands, where the wind funnels through the area and the sea state was a little intimidating. So it was good to have their company. Day three down the coast started with a pod of dolphins and circling birds alerting us to a feeding frenzy and a fish on the line. We had a bonito on the line and this would be one of many to come. Yeah, start to kill him inside here, yeah. and that to the spine, and then to the, the throat to bleed him. Sure, a shark won't get him. Mm hmm. That's something I'm willing to to risk. It's not exactly the best knife for it, but it's solid. You want a very strong knife. What you really want is uh, is actually a dagger. It's sharp on two sides. So what you want to do is, is go in and then once you get into the spine, you twist the spine apart and the fish just stops. That's it, game over for the fish. Either they are either speaking or it's uh, Wow, 30 seconds of shimmy. Yeah, that's a nice amount. Passing through the Channel Islands, we had our first glimpse of fellow sailboaters in several days. We were tempted to anchor up beside them, but the promise of warmer weather kept us going. There was plenty of marinated bonito left after breakfast, so we decided to cook lunch in the solar oven. The go sun was becoming more and more powerful as we traveled south. This combination of clear skies and calm ocean cooked up more fish in no time. And perhaps these dolphins were attracted to the baking fish. But here they came again, this time what looked to be a different species, maybe the short-beaked common dolphin. They had a beige tinge on their side, darker fin, and an even more playful attitude.
Day four, and we were approaching the Coronados, surrounded by mobile fish farms. The sky was gray, but we were starting to feel the tropical air. As we approached the Mexican coastline that day, we started seeing beaches and hotels before rounding the corner into Ensenada. Maybe the Coast Guard will stop the fish as well. After buying the mandatory Mexican boat insurance, temporary import permit, tourist cards, harbor master administration fees, which we found out could only be paid by credit card, no exceptions, then taking a trip to the fishing store and buying a fishing license, we were out about 400 US dollars. But we were checked into the country. Success. Hi, Dad. And as much as we enjoyed meeting the locals in Ensenada, Robbie was itching to get out of the harbor and go jigging. We made our way to the nearby Todos Los Santos and he prepared his hooks. Bottom. Oh. When jigging, according to tradition, we sidled up as close to the rocks with our fragile little sailboat as possible. The first island was abuzz with shellfish farms and birds. The rock formations sure did look nice, but we weren't having much luck catching anything at all. We hoisted the sails and began the passage to, well, we weren't sure quite where. 